Hello again. I thought I would put together a quick year-end review to track my progress as an artist. I started drawing last year just before Christmas. I wanted to draw a map for a book I was writing, but soon realized I was horrible at drawing. I figured I should practice a bit. My first drawing, using Prism Color Scholar pencils, was a drawing of a Basset Hound puppy. After that, I worked on a picture of my mother's cat. The cat was definitely a struggle, but I felt I improved as I worked from left to right. My third project, still working with the Scholar pencils, was a subsea drill made at the company where I work. After these three drawings, I started to watch some YouTube videos on how to improve my drawing and came across Inktense pencils. I specifically recall a Jack Frost Inktense drawing by Fanny Malvison and of course a review done by Lisa at Lacry. So I had to pick myself up a set and decided to draw my eldest son after he won his first baseball championship. It was only his second year in baseball and he played a pretty strong year but had a weak playoff. But I was still quite proud of him. This was the first time I ever used a paintbrush and you can probably tell. And this also happened to be my first video upload to YouTube. I figured if other people can do it, why can't I? I also hope to be able to share my learning with other beginning artists like myself. I decided to do another Inktense drawing of my youngest son in part because I thought I could do a better job and also because the little guy was jealous his brother had a picture done and he didn't. This drawing went much smoother. I then went back to the Scholar pencil crayons and completed my pug drawing. This was the first posting that got a decent number of views. I was also quite happy with the way the drawing turned out. I then decided I wanted to do my first portrait. I needed to practice a bit on the eyes, so I did my how to draw eyes tutorial. At this point, I realized colored pencil drawings consume a fair bit of time, so I decided to alternate a colored pencil drawing with an inktense drawing, which I felt went a little quicker and helped me improve my brush skills. My next drawing was a sperm whale in the West Coast native style using inktense pencils. While doing the pug puppy drawing, I noticed the limitations of using student grade pencils. I was hoping to find some other alternative and decided to go with the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. This motivated me to do my Man of Steel drawing where I compared the Prismas Color Scholar pencils on the left with the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils on the right. During this drawing I concluded that one should not use the Prismacolor Scholar sharpener on the Scholar pencils as it precipitates lead breaking. The Man of Steel drawing has been my most popular, but I've always been disappointed with the Faber-Castell side of the drawing because I had rubbed out the trace lines while doing the left hand side and had to freehand in most of the face. The drawing did show me the differences between the student grade pencils and artist grade pencils. The Faber-Castell pencils held a sharp point nicely, didn't break and produced rich dark colors especially the browns and the blues. I switched then to ink tents and did a drawing of an Oreo. This I was quite pleased with. I used the 36 set of ink tents pencils which I feel is substantially better than the 24 set because of the extra colors it provides. I was also happy at how well the Oreo turned out as it wasn't a house pet drawing or a portrait drawing. The next project was meant to give the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils a serious workout. Sadly, I had spilt something on my paper and decided to switch to ink tents halfway through the drawing. This brings about two points. One, always try to complete your drawing, even if it is not going so well. Try to get it to what you would consider a finished state. Second, this showed how versatile the ink tents pencils are. And for any serious drawing, I'm always going to use watercolor paper so I can bring in the inktense pencils or blocks for backgrounds or detailing. I got out the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils once again for my drawing of Ben Affleck and the Armored Batman. 
The Ben Affleck didn't go so well since I was using a screen capture from one of the many trailers. I probably should have spent more time adding contrast to the image. The armored Batman was a significant improvement, but I also spent a lot more time on it. I finally did see the movie and didn't think it was that bad. They really shouldn't try to hype up their movies so much and tone down the trailers. At least Marvel tries to mislead you with their trailers. DC gives the whole story away with three trailers. Onto my Inktense Beagle. This didn't come out that well. I spent a lot of time trying to find a good reference image and I probably should have kept searching. The background turned out horrible and I really struggled with the shading for the face. After the beagle, I took a bit of a break. We had purchased a house and had to move and I just didn't have time to keep drawing. Once we were settled in, it was time for the kids to go back to school and while shopping for school supplies, I came across a 24 set of Crayola pencils for $2. I decided to give them a try and as I was listening to Nine Inch Nails at the time, I chose to draw a picture of Trent Reznor from the 90s. You really have to work hard at the Crayolas, but for two bucks, I was impressed. With some Strathmore 300 series drawing paper and a set of these, you can make some nice drawings for the price of three lattes. After working with the Crayolas, I quickly put together a comparison of budget colored pencils using the Crayolas, some Hiroi pencils, Prismacolor Scholar pencils, and the Faber-Castell Classic pencils. I chose to draw grapes and tried to limit the number of pencils I was allowed to use. Faber-Castell Classic pencils proved to be the winner in the comparison, although the Crayolas and Prismacolor performed reasonably well. The Hilroy were garbage. The next portrait I did was a special picture of my two sons. I hoped to capture their friendship as I had never really observed siblings that get along as well as these two. I used the Faber-Castell Polychromos for the portrait and by this time I was really enjoying working with them. I now had enough practice at layering and blending them and felt a lot more confident when I used them. For my next drawing, I chose to do a screen capture of Rihanna from the video Stay. I wanted to do it in ink tents and then add in the Faber-Castell Classic Pencils for the details. This was my first drawing where I was trying to combine the two media, and it didn't go as planned. The face, eyes and hairs seemed to be going well, but when I got onto the neck I accidentally darkened things too much. This was disappointing as I had spent a fair bit of time on this only to bungle it near the end of the drawing. After this, I decided to tone things down and really only try to put out a drawing about once a month. I noticed my comparison of budget pencils had gotten three dislikes quite quickly, so I thought I would revisit the comparison with Doctor Strange as a subject of my drawing. I split the drawing into three sections with the Crayola pencils used for the upper left the Prismacolor Scholar pencils used for the upper right, and the Faber-Castell Classic pencils used for the lower middle section. I chose not to use the Hilroy pencils because they're garbage. Once again, the Faber-Castell Classic pencils outperform the other two sets, but they are a little bit more expensive, so maybe it's not that surprising. For my last drawing of the year, I chose to draw President Donald Trump. After his surprising victory, he seemed to be the ideal man of the year and worthy of a comparison of Prismacolor Scholar and Premier Pencils, both made in Mexico and previously made in the USA. I also wanted to bring up some potentially positive changes he may be able to bring about during his term as president. I used the Premier Pencils for the left hand side and the Scholar Pencils for the right hand side. The results of the comparison were fairly significant as I really enjoyed how well the Premier pencils blended and layered. I just hated sharpening them and I didn't like that they couldn't hold a point to do detailed work. They're just too soft. I do look forward to using them in the future, but I think I will combine them with other pencils. 
like the Faber-Castell Classic or Polychromos pencils. I also decided that I would no longer use the Prismacolor Scholar pencils. I've used these for quite a few drawings and have finally gotten tired of the breaking leads. For whatever reason, the whites and the blacks break constantly and you usually get a pencil or two that has broken the length of the lead. Finally, I just want to thank all the people who have viewed my videos. I had two goals for the year and that was 100 subscribers and 20,000 views and I'm pretty close on both of those goals. This year, I would like to double those numbers and put up at least one video a month. I also hope to get into using pastels and maybe even acrylic or oil paints. We will see how things go. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.